Cheers, guys. Wife said well, I, was, I was allowed one beer, so um, I got a big one. So I'm, as you probably all know, I'm from the UK. Uh, Luke's over in the US, um, in Seattle. So we kind of make tunes over Skype, or we're trying to go to Zoom now, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass. But so yeah, we sort of chuck ideas um, back and forward, and, and this was the uh, the first sort of draft of it. And uh, as you can see, we got the idea down pretty quick. The intro is pretty much the same, but the drops a bit different. But this is kind of uh, the first draft of it and we were sort of really happy with it I'll just I'll just play along while we wait for people Big up Chris. Cook up like a guillotine. But yeah, so we, we got the idea down pretty quick. It was uh, obviously the track we did before that was London Bass. It came out on Ram as well. Big up everyone at Ram. And uh, yeah, we just kind of wanted to do something on a similar tip using the old, old school brakes, some nice uh, stabs, kind of a nice sort of rough, jungly sort of, you know, that, that kind of feel. So we, uh, we made that, like I said, in, in about six hours. And uh, a couple of days later, Luke uh, phoned me up and he said... Um, he said, man, I just found this perfect sample for it. We tried to use it years ago. And it's this old sample where he was watching this like Vietnam documentary and uh, he saw a load of guys, uh, I think they were just like, they were jumping out of a helicopter and uh, into the woods and stuff. And he just came up and said, it was pure jungle. And he was like, oh, I fit perfectly. And I was like, yeah, sick. So yeah, we, we put that in. We tried to use it years ago, but um, I didn't really go anywhere. It was kind of a similar track, maybe about five or six years ago. But um, that, that project kind of died after I started singing on it. We recorded my vocals and um, <laughs> we kind of started hating it from there. So it never really, w uh, really went anywhere. But yeah, this is, this is the sample direct from the uh, documentary. It was pure jungle. So yeah, nice. Anyway, yeah, thought you might get a kick out of that. Yeah, that's kind of how the tune came about. And uh, the rest is history. It's probably one of the quickest tracks we've ever made, actually. From start to finish, or from start to actually it coming out was about six months, which was quite quick for us. Obviously, big up Ram for getting that out so quick. Yeah, I guess good time to point out now. We just had our uh, first sample pack out. Um, so you can grab that now from our Bandcamp page. So mobtactics.bandcamp.com. Collection of all of our sounds and all the things we made in Serum. And yeah, it's got some wicked like drum loops and basses, some FX and stuff that we actually made ourselves. And uh, yeah, we had some really good feedback on it. it. Came out a couple of weeks ago, so um, go check that out if you want to use some of our sounds. Yeah, let's go on to the drums then, first off. I had to tidy up for you guys just so I actually knew what was going on. I could talk about it. But the main, um, the main drums in this, or the main character of the drums, is obviously through the uh, funky drummer. I'm just solo the drums and we'll play through a little bit. It's 
kicks up a little bit in the third 16. So yeah, if we break it down, um, I normally work on two screens, so this might be a bit of a, uh, a squeeze, but um, I'll do my best. So yeah, the funky drummer split up into um, two or three different channels because um, we wanted to process a few different, a few hits differently. So the main um, break, apart from the snare, um, is going through this one channel here. And then the snare is going through our snare bust separately. So um, yeah, so we break up our breaks in um, Slice X, which comes with FL Studio. Yeah, Sputnik. Yeah, similar to the yeah drums in Dreamworld. This is it's the same break, um, layered over different stuff. But um, yeah, we got loads of decent comments and feedback about the drums in Dreamworld. So we thought we'd try and um, we thought we'd try and resurrect that break. And yeah, it worked really well. So um, yeah, we uh, slice up our drums in Slice X. Um, I think this was originally a Rex file. It's uh, it's pretty simple with the, the processing we do. So first off on here we got uh, just an EQ because it's an old crusty break. We've um, pushed the tops out a little bit, um, taking the bottoms out. Standard procedure. Next plugin we got on there is the um, UAD Precision uh, Precision K Stereo, which is um, a plugin that you can get with the UAD Apollo audio interface, which we run. Um, we run quite a few plugins through there kind of alleviates the CPU from the, uh, obviously from the actual computer. It's like a stereo plugin. Um, it adds some stereo width. It claims to, um, when I was watching through the promo video, it claims to pick up um, some of the room sound that was lost during like recording these sounds, but that's absolute bollocks. <laughs> what it does, as far as I can um, figure out, is basically adds like a really short delay, like a stereo delay to the signal. It can't always be a good thing, but in this case, um, it really works. We use it on drums. Actually, we use it on quite a lot of stuff on vocals. If I take it to the extreme, you'll hear what it does. So it just adds like a really short delay to it. So you don't want too much of that on your drums because it sounds like it's, it's out of time. But the good thing about this plugin is you can um, you can just affect the um, the top end of it as well. So you don't really want any sort of delays going on on your on your sort of mid signals. After that, we've got a uh, dimension expander, which is pretty much the same thing. This is a free plugin um, from Xfer, the guys that make Serum. It's pretty much the same thing as well, but it just has a bit of a different sound, a bit of a different character. We use this on quite a lot of stuff as well. Again, it's just like a, a short delay sort of reverb. Um, if I turn it up, we keep the size at naught which is basically like the, the room size. Um, so if you turn it up, you'll hear it's obviously a bit more um, bit more uh, time between the delays. Which obviously, again, you don't really want with uh, with drums. So yeah, those two together normally create like a nice stereo image for sounds. It's quite subtle, but it makes, makes it, you know, it just fills it out a bit. After that, we got some more EQ going on, just taking out the side information. So we just take out the bottom end of anything under sort of three, four hundred. Must have been some weird artifacts in the original sample or something. Um, a bit more EQ. Um, this one, I can't remember exactly why we put this one in, but 300 is where the snare hits, I think, in that break. So I think it's probably a little bit resonant in that area or something. And Camel Crusher we use quite a lot. It's quite an old plugin. We use it on quite a lot of stuff on drums. Even put a little uh, subtle one on the main mix master which is probably probably a bad thing but it seems to work for us um we're not really using any of the, the uh, distortion or, or filtering or anything it's just purely for the compression i like that you can just just chuck it on turn it up a little bit and you know exactly what it's going to do normally we sort of go through after and and uh and put some more expensive <laughs> compression on but um it just sounded how we want it to sound so there wasn't really much point so yeah that's the um that's the funky drummer um which is obviously the the main character of the break over the top of that, we got a um, little punchy um, snare. It's just a little virtual right one from his um, sample pack. I think he must have got that off, um, off Splice, I think. Uh, it's just a really quiet, just a little punchy one that, that um, marries up nicely with the funky drummer snare around 300 hertz. 
just gives it a nice little sort of transient punch. So if I talk to myself for half an hour and no one's bloody there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick my dog. Not really. So um, yeah, next in the drum chain, uh, we've got the shakers. These are some shakers which we use quite a lot. We did a collab with Prolix a good few years ago. Well, a few years ago, transmission. Um, went around his house and we sort of had a little uh, mess around with the track and we took some samples away and um, yeah, he left us with these shakers which are uh, <laughs> wicked. These are the original shakers. And um, we found if you really pitch them down and shorten um, in, in, in slice section, you can shorten each hit to become really snappy. And they now sound like this. But yeah, if, if you sort of if you shorten every um, shaker hit, it's a good way of getting like a nice chuggy thing without um, without taking up too much space in the uh, in the mix. Um, they run through another Camel Crusher. This time with a bit of distortion, and also with a fat mode turned on, which sounds great, doesn't it? PH fat. As far as I know, that just adds a bit of distortion to the compressor, but it just seems to sound alright. So yeah, if you distort some shakers, making sure you don't distort them too much, otherwise you get um, some sort of weird artifacts in the top end and luckily it was alright in this case, just um, stuck an EQ on it. Because we're distorting it, we've got to take the bottom end out of the shakers um, because there was too much coming through after that. Um, just another little layer here. This is a break from... This is when we had the... Uh, when we released the answer on MTA ages ago. So just that uh, adds a hat and a, a layer to the uh, kick. Just a little top layer, nothing too drastic. Another little sort of a uh, hat kick sort of thing, just obviously with the bottom end all EQ'd out. What's this? I don't even know what this thing is here. Oh, it's just a little hat in the middle. Nothing too uh, exciting there. The kick we got here is a, um, we've used this quite a lot as well over the years. It is a kick from the old Vengeance packs. This is from like a, uh, a dance, like a club dance pack. I'm just take the, uh, Take these effects off here. Big up Simon. See ya. So yeah, this is the kick. It's a bit flabby, but um, if you there was a few sort of EQ notches and, and pushes we had to do here just to make it push through better. Cutting out stuff below sort of thirty because there's no point in in having that. And then running through a kick and snare bus. So yeah, the kick, kick and snare bus again. We've got a camel crusher. Don't hate us. <laughs> um, yeah, we have Camel Crusher, like I said, on, on loads of stuff because it just does, I don't know exactly what it does, so it's great for us. Um, running it through a Fab Filter Saturn. I believe this is the uh, the default setting when you open Saturn. It opens up with very gentle tape distortion or tape drive. Use that on our sub channel as well. Um, it just uh, warms it up and glues it up a little bit. So that's, um, that's what that's doing. And then we've got an Ampex which is another UAD plugin that comes with the Apollo or purchased separately, um, which is like a temp, uh, tape emulation software. It's probably not even really doing much, probably just psychological, but it sounds a little bit better when it's on there. It's um, It kind of makes a bit of a warmer signal and makes it sound like it's running through some nice analog, um, analog kit. I'll turn it on and off, it's probably not even doing much. It sounds a bit different, <laughs> and it looks good, so it's fine. It's all good. Yeah, so that's that's those things. Um, kick and snare side chain. I'll talk about that in a bit. That's another kick that's laid on top of the on top of the main kick um, with all the bottoms taken out. It's just about fi about finding sweet spots when you're EQing and stuff like that, because we've got sort of maybe three or four different kicks of uh, laid on top of each other. So you just don't want to have too much going on the bottom end or, or mids. Some a couple more shakers. They're not doing too much. Just giving it a bit of. No, that's not them shakers. That's the other ones. Just some little cheeky shakes on top. And uh, just lastly, some more hats. Some rides. So that's the main break. Over the top of that. These are just a few audio um, samples uh, over the top. 
Nothing too interesting, just a few reverse sounds. Another shaker. Really subtle sounds over the top. Now these are the rides. And rides are so important in uh, making sort of decent breaks, giving it that sort of energy at the top. But if I take all the effects off of this, this uh, what the, the ride sounds like. Horrible. Horrible. You don't really want, obviously, you just want the, the top end. So we take all the uh, take all the bottom end out. And then we stick on this dimension expander again, the one we used in the uh, in the break to begin with. Um, so that gives us some side information. Now here we've got this EQ uh, running because obviously there was some quite resonant spikes. Turn it on and off. And on. And then the main thing about having a nice ride and not making it too in your face is putting a nice big reverb on it. Not too much of the dry signal, quite a lot of wet. Um, cutting the low signal off of the um, off of the wet uh, signal and it just turns it into a nice lush sort of white layer over the top. This um, next layer is, we do this quite a lot in our tracks as well. Once we've um, once we're happy with the drums, or at a certain point through the drum uh, making process, we will export um, the drums as audio and layer them over the same drums again, but um, pitch down. And with a lot of the um, mid information taken out, pushing out the stereo image. What that does for us, it just kind of makes obviously the sound a lot bigger. Um, it gives it some sort of wide, wider information. Replace uh, without and with. It's mainly the, the kind of claps or the snares that you can hear come out, I think. So without any effects on it. It's literally just the pitch down. One of our, um, actually it's probably not even the same break. It's just one of our breaks pitch, pitch down. Um, run it through a camera crusher as always, but heavily compressed. Because what you want to do is get all that information, all that quiet information coming out. You would not you would never sort of compress something that much with your normal drums, um, but this is just a very subtle layer behind it. Um, I guess in a way it's like kind of parallel compression. You have like one really um, uh, heavily compressed signal um, playing in sort of parallel with your normal one. Um, so yeah, we've got camera crusher taking out all of the um, or the bottom end just by finding that sweet spot you don't obviously want it to um, to clash I'm guessing when we pitched it down we got the sort of the the top end of the um, EQ spectrum poking out a bit too much um, sort of in the audible range so obviously we took that out this is stereo shaper which I haven't used in years actually it's just something that comes with FL um, you can sort of control the mid and the side signals It just takes those mid bits out because we don't really want them. Sort of pushes the sound to the side a bit. Again, if you use that too much, it sounds like too much of a delay and it goes out of time with the track. So you've got to just use that with a pinch of salt. Stick the FL limiter on it. Just take out the spikes. We don't want anything getting in the way of the track. This is just in the background. You don't really hear. You don't want to hear any of the transients. Just a bit of wash. And um, again, just to make sure nothing pokes through got this um, uh, neutron transient shaper on the I think it's normally the pillowy drums preset that we use and that just kind of just takes the transients off the uh, off the off the start of each hit you can see the little um, volume automation here so yeah that just gives us some energy on the, on the sides and we've we've been doing that in quite a few tracks Luke used to hate it so I used to like stick it on every track, and he's like, "No, oh, it's too much, too much, too much." But we we used to use it too much, and it and it um it does take over the track. So it's something you have to use like really subtly. Um, that's pretty much the whole drum bus. Um, obviously in the third sixteen, we've got a few more bits coming out. Yeah, we've got some bongos coming in. That's from a um, Cause of Concern pack, R.O.P. Octave, 
and um, yeah, just the subtle EQ on that. And again, this um, pre uh, pre oh, I can't say a bloody word. Precision K stereo. I need some beer um, for stuff like bongos and and any percussion. This K stereo is great. Again, um, I'll play it off, and this this isn't quite an extreme setting to be honest, but without. Stick it on. Just just fills it out. I love that plugin. It's great. Makes things sound expensive. Um, yep, and then just a couple more. These are just from a sample pack. Just some um, low, just some little shakers that come in. Just some little jungly shakers. I think that's a think break. And uh, another one. They're a bit clashy, to be honest, but hey, they're there. They're stuck now. Um, yeah, wicked. So the drum bus. Okay, so we've still got some drums in the intro. Just a little hat loop. Nothing too exciting. So when we come to the second 16, we've got the jungly breaks that come in. Um, all of these drum samples, these are straight samples um, from a sample pack. Obviously, we process them a bit, but these are like 140 BPM samples from I think it's Underground Sounds. Yes, I think it's like some kind of techno pack or some jungle techno pack. Um, obviously, we sped these up to 174. Didn't need any processing on the on the first couple of breaks, but we just sort of chopped a few together. When it comes to this section here. We stuck a fruity delay on, um, which again is just the one that comes with fruity loops. It's just a normal delay plugin. Um, if you set the time, the delay time to be really short, you get that kind of um, almost like a static um, flange sort of phasing sound, um, which is wicked. If I move it around a little bit, you can hear what it's doing. So yeah, that's a lot of fun sometimes when you're playing with, um, with breaks. I'm um, just chopping up sample here to get some stutter. And then we've got a automation set for the delay time. So um, as the break goes on, it will, uh, obviously the delay gets a bit longer. So it sounds like it's um, more delayed. <laughs> so yeah, that's quite fun to do. I love chopping up stuff like that. It's good fun. Um, so it just stuck a sort of longer delay on it on the end bit and that is that I think, I think that's pretty much the whole drum bus we just got some crashes don't worry too much about crashes to be honest um, you know you can start trying to synthesize your own crashes and record your own drums but at the end of the day you know there are samples out there that you can just stick straight in the track crashes to be honest you know i can't get as, as good crashes as you know some people so yeah this one here particularly is just the virtual right crash again probably taken off twitch at uh, twitch for splice um just some reverse crashes and yeah got some crashes going throughout the track some reverse crashes going through sort of every four bars And then we've got some little perk fills that come in. Um, again, these are taken from the, un the Underground Sounds pack. Um, they're pretty much chucked chuck straight in. Just to keep the break interesting. Um, and yeah, so on this bit here as well, we've got a um, little reverse sound. And this is just our, I think this is probably our break put through um, some EQ that delay plugin to give it that sort of short flange sound again some reverb and then just reverse the whole uh, wav so that's pretty cool I think that's pretty much it for the drums 
Sorry, was just on a phone call. In regards to drums, do you always whack it onto a bus, then compress before sending it to the master? To be honest, we compress things um, a little bit as we go along. We've got a little bit of compression going into each bus. So we've got our drums going to another drum bus, into the main mix, then into the master. And on all of those, we've got a little bit of compression going on. Probably not supposed to do that, but um, it works for us. So, fuck you. Um, not really, not you. I didn't mean you. Fuck the haters. Um, let's go on to... Let's go on to sub. So yeah, specialist sound if you're there. I think there's one of the bases in this track that came from one of your... Um, it was like a barbecue and bass or... There's some sample pack you put together and there's this nice little sort of wobbly sub bass in there. I stumbled across it when we were making this and it fit perfectly. So I think that was from one of your packs. That must have been like a good 12 years ago. And uh, yeah, I love it. I'll just play the sub through. That's pretty much the gist of it. We've got two main subs going on. We've got one coming out of Serum, which is Fat Sub, PH Fat Sub. This is a. Um, square wave oscillator normally use a sine wave but um just scrolling through a few sort of videos um or making subs and serum to see if i can pick up any tricks and this um seems to turn out quite well it's essentially um a square which is running through a low pass filter a little bit of a resonant spike um where the where the bass hits there's no effects on this within serum um, but essentially it's set up so um the wavetable position goes and mangles into a, um, a different type of shape i'm not sure what that shape would be called but when the sub plays, it kind of bounces along and gives it a little bit more movement. Just so it's not a, a pure sort of um, square wave the whole way through. So our sub goes through... Well, actually, I'll show you the, the other sub. Well, I showed you that already, but... Yeah, it's just that wicked little wobbly pigeon bass. And that's literally just a sample but obviously played in different notes and, and bent bent up and down. We sidechain the sub with the kick and snare. We do that through Volume Shaper. Um, so on the drum bus, we have a uh, MIDI send. So we have a, a MIDI channel here. So kick sidechain, we do to port one. Snare sidechain, we do to port two. Yeah, so we have our sub going through the uh, this channel here, and we got yeah, sort of the, the MIDI um, sends going to Volume Shaper. So every time the kick hits, we have this duck in volume. Every time the snare hits, we have a shorter duck in volume. We don't always need to do the snare. Um, just sometimes I think if you're trying to push the project and get a bit more volume out of it, then sometimes um, to get that snare cutting through, you don't need any sort of um, distractions around it cutting the sub when the snare hits sometimes works um, and it did in this case so um, just a bit of EQ because obviously you don't need any tops in the um, in the sub and just run through a limiter just to make sure there's no spikes or anything yeah specialist sound do you recognize this sample I might be wrong oh you made it you made that in Soundforge oh shit <laughs> tried to copy Luna bass well, I've tried to copy this this sound quite a few times. I've never got it quite right. We put it in there as a bit of a marker just to sort of fill out the track while we're trying to get a vibe down. And, uh, yeah, it turns out I couldn't recreate it. And it didn't quite cut through enough, so it, it stayed in there. So, yeah, cheers, man. About 15 years ago, apparently. There we go. So, yeah, you're on RAM. So, yeah, that's our sub. So, let's move on to the bass, which is one of my favourite bits about the track. Although, I think I said that about the drums. Yeah, I'll shut up. Basically, the um, the bass is made up of eight different serums, I think. They're all pretty much the same, um, just with slight tweaks. We made the first bass first, obviously. And uh, and then we just tweaked the patch to make the bass sound evolve throughout the track. I'll play the bass through for 32. Bit. 
So yeah, it's all done through serum. That second bit is my favourite too. Wicked. Good taste, mate. Good taste. So yeah, this so this first base here is what the patch looks like. I used the wave tables from one of Urban Dub's serum packs. Go check that out. It's wicked. It's really good. Um, there's some great presets in there that you can sort of tweak and make your own. Um, and there's some wicked wave tables um, that you can use as well, which we have done in this case. The bass is made up of th well, two oscillators, three including the sub. The actual sound coming out of Serum is a bit of a mess, it's not great. It's all done through the filter work afterwards, so this is the sound. So it's a bit of a distorted mess, but when you whack, whack all the plugins on. Still distorted, but it sounds nice. Yeah, we've got this oscillator one, which is just a, a nice sounding wavetable moving around. We've got the um, wavetable position being automated by LFO1. I'll turn the effects off whilst talking through it because otherwise we won't really sort of hear what it's doing. So we start off with this oscillator sound. It's obviously quite quiet, but we can press it afterwards. So oscillator B is, if you notice, it's four semitones higher than oscillator A. So that kind of creates a, almost like a, um, a, a chord. Um, this is on F and essentially that'll be on what's that A. So this is oscillator B. Just a really sort of um, simple, um, clean note tone, um, and together is that kind of sound. When you put the sub into the mix as well, it gives it some grit on the bottom end, but you really hear that come out more when you start compressing and distorting things. So the actual sound itself, without going through any effects, is toilet. But you find when you, when I start making a, a bass or when, when we try and sit down and sort of create one from scratch, we normally put some effects on to begin with, like the compressor, distortion, and then start messing around with them because otherwise it's quite hard to make a decent sound. So if we just put the distortion on that sound, so that's where a lot of the character comes from. And that's a pretty full on distortion as well. It's got an EQ on there just to push out the top ends make those really rasp through and then the compressor the magic compressor in serum sorry the magic multiband compressor in serum always click this multiband button it's magic yeah and with that on Ooh, it's getting big so um yeah this is a multiband compressor you can move the um the, it's, it's split into three bands obviously you've got your low your mids and your highs so the minute these are all kind of set to about around 100 percent um, but that's basically if you drag it left and right you can um, you can set how much each band is being compressed So if you wanted more sort of bottoms to come through and, and compress through more you Push that through or take it out So that is running through um, Two volume shapers They're linked to the kick and the snare, but instead of uh, ducking out the whole um, band um, The whole sort of volume of, of the bass because obviously that would sound a bit shit unless that's what you want to do um, you can set it to duck out certain certain parts of the sound. So um, for this, for the kick volume shaper, we've got it um, ducking out. Um, that's the snare one, isn't it? Yeah, snare one first. Um, between sort of 200 and 400 hertz, the snare is um, poking out at about 300. So whenever the snare hits, the bass ducks its around 300 hertz um, signal, which again just helps it to, to poke through a bit more. And similarly on this... Um, on the kick one, we've got it anything going under 150, which it probably isn't much anyway, but might as well um, put it on there in case anything leaks through, as it were. Bit of EQ, self explanatory. And then the filter work we got on here is stuck off of my screen because I normally work with two screens. Oh, what a nightmare. Oh, you little prick. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> got ya. It's um, a KHS filter made by the Kilo Hearts guys, um, the people that just made uh, Phase Plant, which I've not played with yet, but it looks wicked. It looks really good. Yeah, I need to buy that. It's just a standard um, low pass filter. Obviously, without it, the signal is a bit of a mess, but um, with it on, lovely stuff. These two EQs are turned off at the moment, um, but I'll say what they're for in a bit. And then it's running through this uh, Valhalla Room reverb plug-in which is awesome really good the mix level of the reverb i think is uh is this one here 
it actually um the reverb doesn't kick in until until the full sound is out um just because it was a bit muddy with the reverb on on the whole bass sound might not be able to hear too much but if i play it with it all on it was just kind of reverbed on that initial hit which we didn't really need yeah not too much to say about a reverb it's a reverb in it yeah one thing i don't really like about that plugin is you can't really control the how much um lows and, and low mids come through um the wet signal you kind of can but it's not very it's not very intuitive but anyway it worked on that occasion um then a limiter just to take out any spikes that's probably that's taken off a lot more than we would normally do to be honest but i didn't want to try and tidy this project project up before showing you um just because you know this, that's how it sounds and that's kind of how it all worked out so yeah that's that's the, the first bass does that three times and then it moves on to this little bastard which is made from the same kind of patch um, we basically cloned it and then just mess about with it from there and it's a great way of getting some variation on the bass instead of using the same bass um, over the whole track so I think it's using the same wavetables yeah I think they're the same, wa same, um, same wavetables but um, with these wavetable positions uh, moved around a bit differently yeah so they're, they're in a different position so it just hits a different different part in, in the wavetable so yeah the difference in this one is we've got a nice little um, EQ spike in here um, before it hits the distortion and compression and I'll talk about that more in one of these other bases because it's um, a bit easier to explain um, but yeah that's just basically made up from the same patch just um, tweaked around in different wavetable positions so this here on the second 16 is another one made from the same wavetables in a similar way with oscillator B um, remember on the first bass I said it was um, four semitones higher than the oscillator A which makes a chord sort of like an F and a, um A chord this one's pushed up seven semitones so it's pushed up to um, C I think yeah C and that's an octave higher as well so what we've done here as well is we've used the EQ section in the effects to push out this spike if you watch the EQ signal what we've done because we knew seven semitones higher was a C we've set the um, frequency of this to be 523 which if you look at a if you want to get geeky you can just move around and find some sweet spots which we normally do um, in this case if you find like a frequency charts of, of where notes hit I found that obviously C hits on 523.25 which you can't set, which annoyed me a little bit, but I'm sure it doesn't make any difference. So yeah, we set that to um, 5-2-3, which pokes out right at the right point. Just on that note, when you're kind of moving frequencies around in here, it's quite hard. I don't know if it's just FL or whatever, but it's quite hard to move it gradually. It jumps sort of every 15 or so, which is really annoying. And when you sort of double double click on it, it doesn't normally let you type in a value, but there's a, a, a setting here, double click for typeable values and controls which after a lot of searching I found so you've got to enable that, I don't know why it's not enabled by default but yeah if you enable that you can type in um, particular frequencies that you want or any of the controls yeah so this again is the same um, as the other bases but it looks like these are compressed a lot more in the top ends just to bring that out <laughs> everyone else like <laughs> clapping for the NHS shut up trying to listen to my man yeah if you want to pop outside for two minutes and then um, clap for the NHS. I should have gone for a piss then really shouldn't I? That'd have made more sense. I should have had such a big beer. But I was only allowed one. Yeah I think that's, there's a few more bases. I think this one here. Again it's just a variation. That's that same bass again but then with this new one there going back down to four semitones on oscillator B. Just about sort of switching it up and down. Um, yeah, one thing I did mention about the bass is um, if you uh, use unison on um, oscillators, like if you detune it any sort of saw ways slightly, they will they will phase and it will give it a bit of movement. So you can kind of get the same thing in here. If you turn these down to naught, it just wouldn't sound the same. Hopefully, <laughs> I'll play that on its own. 
And the more you detune it, as you move the detune around, and you get some different sounds, you get some kind of different movements. And once that's run through the distortions and the compressors and everything, even those tiny little changes can make all the difference. Yeah, and that's the basis really. Um, just seeing if we've missed anything out. Yeah, so in this again, back in this uh, second section where the um, where the higher patch comes in, we've set these um, fab filter EQs to come on. So obviously, when you're running everything through the same channel and then you sort of change the patch, it, it's, it's going to sound different. So there was some sort of high. Um, I think there was some high end that was a bit annoying that came out. Oh no, quite the opposite. But they just needed EQing separately, so we just automated them to come on when the high high bass comes in. And again, there's another one for, for this patch that comes in. Just another another EQ that comes in there. So I think that's pretty much it for the bass. But yeah, I love Serum, man. It's wicked. And it's really satisfying sort of making sounds from scratch as well. But just that, that combination of EQ, distortion, compression, um, can just get you some wicked sounds just by moving through wavetables and automating them to, get to uh, you know bounce around and play with each other so yeah that's wicked um so that's the bass whoop, whoop. better up actually it's taking quite a while isn't it next section stabs um yeah sorry about the connection guys fucking nightmare man right are we on okay we've got a signal we're back woo so these are stabs so i'll just play through these You get the idea. <clears throat> so these stabs are actually made up of four different stabs. And I think they all come from, again, a really old pack. I think we got off of Dogs on Acid or Drum Bass Arena or something. They're all... I think someone took a load of stabs from sort of all these well-known rave records and um, and just put them all on a big pack. So I don't exactly know where they're from, but I have a feeling they've been sampled from somewhere. So if you don't... If you know what they are, shut up, because it might get, me, might get us in trouble. Yeah, you think they're still on the DOA? Yeah, okay. So the main stabs are these four. Definitely recognise one of those, but let's not say anything about that. Don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, it's just a, a collection of four different stabs to create a new one. Um, messed around with with loads of different layers of, of stabs um, just to see what worked, and we just came came through with this um, with this combination after lots of pitch uh, pitch changes and because everything's been sampled, it's all sort of out of tune and. Um, it sounds a bit of a mess, so yeah, it took quite a long time to get them all gel to gel together. They're all just running through their own separate channels, just with some their own EQs on. Horrible frequencies, just EQ them out, boost the ones that sound nice, that sort of thing. And then they all go through this um, stab bus, which is a um, collection of plugins. If I turn them off, with it on. The idea there was obviously to get nice stereo sound again. Yeah, make it nice and bright, poke through the track, and we just do that in the same way we normally do. So um, EQ, take the bottom end out. There's no point in having any bottom end in those um, in those stabs, especially when it drops. Stick it through a camel crusher. The old trusty camel crusher. Again, just uh, using compression, no distortion. I think I'll just move those plugins around. We'll see if that's messed up. Shit. Run through Ampex, which again is that tape distortion plugin. Just makes it sound slightly more vintage, but nothing too too drastic. I'm sure you can get other tape emulation plugins. Run through Valhalla Room. I'm definitely changing stuff now. I'm scrolling around. That Valhalla Room comes in. I think that's just for this part here before the drop. 
just to make it sort of filter out um, or reverb out before it drops back in again. Gives the ball more of a suck sound. I'm on the Punk IPA, by the way. Lovely drop. So yeah, that's the reverb. Um, uh, a bit more EQ. We'll try and get through this quick now. So the filter, that's just for when it comes in. Um, she's the KHS filter again. Pretty self-explanatory. And then we use the dimension expander again on size zero, which again just makes it a really um, tight um, sort of reverb delay sound. But it, this just adds so much dimension to, to loads of different sounds. Yeah, sign up to that Beer 52 Club. It's awesome. Beer delivered to your door every month. I think I actually signed up for that for the first month because they give you one for like a quid. I got like 12 nice beers for a pound and then I'm a tight ass, so I stopped getting them. But yeah, recommended. It's quite nice. Um, and this Resonance EQ, what is that for? Okay, that was for... So when the, um, when the stabs filter down in the intro, um, this is just an EQ which sort of turns on at points where it starts to sound a bit resonant. So where it's filtering down, we've got this automation clip which turns the EQ on and off. So when they come in full, the EQ turns off. It's just like a nice way of um, EQing some uh, problem spots without having to put an EQ on, on the whole thing. And yeah, that's the stabs. So, couple of little bits we got here we've got obviously these reverse stabs again that's a similar way that we do the um, drums just uh, export a little part of our stabs and actually that was from the um, that's from the original one the, the uh, sort of six hour version never realized that that was from the uh, this one so that must have been there from the start um, so yeah, that was just uh, that, and then reversed, and then just chopped up in a certain way to make it sound cool, and then just run through the same plugins as the rest of the stabs. So after, what is it, eight bars, we've got this little layer coming in here, which I think is just a little side signal to, yeah, it's just a little reverbed stab just to give it a bit more depth and give it a bit more variation as it goes along. Reverse thing. Yeah, that's a reverse one again, but with the pitch automation on there, so it goes from um, sort of down low to up high. Pretty cool. Third section of stabs. Mm, nothing too special there either. That's just the um, the extra sample. It's got a nice delay and tail on it, which um, we haven't taken off. And when you play it in a uh, in a nice little melody, it sounds cool. Um, also, if you tell it to cut itself, um, when it plays the next note, um, it doesn't play the tail of the previous note over the top of the, of the next one. So um, it doesn't end up an absolute mess of, of reverbs and delays. And that's the stabs. Let's move on. FX and melodies. There's not too much to talk about on this one, really. Um, it's just all uh, it's mainly samples. Again, got to give a shout out to the Underground Sounds guys that made the um, uh, what was it, Junglist Techno sample pack or something? Because um, got some wicked samples in there. I'd love to say that we made this pad through some expensive software and things, but um, in the first session we just kind of um, found this perfect sample. Little fucker. Let's go open the door now. I've got little bugs in there. Yeah, so it's, it's this, this pad sample, uh, which sounds wicked. We've sort of chopped, chopped it up a bit to make the um, rhythm and sort of sequence a bit better, but yeah, it was a, a great find um, that we found in the first session. It kind of laid down the whole vibe of the, um, of the track. We've done a few things to it. Start of the track, we just got this nice little high pass filter on it to make it sweep in. And that's one of the KHS filters. Yeah, we just thought it was lacking a bit. We just EQ'd it with a nice um, pull tech EQ. So without, it just felt a bit dull. So just bought out the whole sort of um, 12K range. It's a great plugin for um, bringing out certain ranges. 
but I'm not sure if you can get this without the um, without the UAD uh, interface. Probably can. Um, so yeah, that was the pad, and then we just got some impacts again. Same time we tend to not waste too much of our time with things like impacts and crashes. Um, so again, these are from a Virtual Riot um, pack, which we used a few a few of the samples from there. I think we got them from Splice, but um, yeah, they're great clean samples. Little sub drop thing there. Impact collapse. So yeah, with stuff like that, you can't really mess about too much. Well, you obviously can, see each their own, but I get bored with stuff like that. So if someone else can do it, then why not? It's a little rave samples here. I can't remember where this is from exactly, but I know it's sampled from somewhere. So and again, let's just run through a nice um, delay. So for delays, um, for nice long delays, we'd use FabFilter Timeless, which I'm sure a lot of you do as well. It's great because the sort of default setting on Timeless has a high pass sort of built into the tail. So instead of like just delaying the signal and um, and just sort of getting quieter over time, it uh, sort of filters out and uh, makes it sound like it's kind of disappearing rather than turning down. So yeah, great plug in that. And just uh, run through this standard fruity, fruity reverb. Nothing special there. The uh, little pluck melody in the intro came from Nexus, I think. We used to use Nexus quite a lot, but uh, it's a bit corrupted at the minute, so I can't exactly show you what's going on. When I start changing stuff, it, it crashes, so yeah, just take my word for it. It's a great plugin. It's great for like sort of trance leads. Um, it's got a wicked reverb and delay built into it. Um, ones that you can sort of reverb for like you know 30 seconds and it makes it sound all dreamy um you normally need to push out the top ends in it a bit because it's a bit um a bit dull in sound if i remember correctly yeah we had to push the top out of that we used this for um quite a few this is one particular sound that we got out of it we used in shark tank on viper it's another little bastard got ya yeah, where was I? Yeah, we used the, uh, it's like a trance lead, but so really reverbed out, so it just sounds like a like high intensity sort of pad stab, it's brilliant. So yeah, that's that. It's got a little sort of uh, white noise sounds. Nothing too drastic there. And another vocal which probably shouldn't have used. You know where that's from. Again, comes in here. I love that little switch. So yeah, that's that. We just wanted to again just get a bit more character in, into the track, um, get some sounds that people recognise. Bit of ear candy, get you uh, hooked into the track. Got a little um, hip hop vocal there that you probably know where it's from, but again, shouldn't say. Back on that gorilla shit. Back on um, but again, like with any of these vocals, um, just run it through an EQ and the Magic Dimension Expander because it just adds so much and makes it sound wide and and luke likes the term expensive but it's just an, an instant i like, switch it off just makes it sound like it's filled the speakers and and you know the whole sort of spectrum so yeah it's a great little plugin it's free as well go download that although it is built into serum as well it's the same as the uh in here the dimension Reminds me, I didn't actually say what the uh, what we did to the vocal. So yeah, I played the original uh, sample, which is from some like Vietnam uh, War uh, documentary. It was pure jungle. Sliced it up, timed it up. It was pure jungle. Ran it through. Um, Fruity Delay plugin, the same plugin that we used for the breaks in the intro. Put a really tight delay on that. If you turn it all the way up, it sounds messy, but... It was pure jump. And then sort of down to a 25%. Bit of EQ, limiter, again the Dimension Expander. And then underneath it, we've layered up the same vocal, but I think probably five semitones. Yeah, five semitones down. It was pure jump. So when you uh, lay them together, it's like a nice chord robot kind of thing. It was pure jungle. Yeah, so there we go. I was going to try and finish this beer by the time it was finished, but I've only got halfway through. That's pathetic, isn't it? 
rubbish. So we've got all of our buses going through. We don't do a lot in, in our actual um, buses, just a little bit of compression. In the drum bus, though, we've got a bit of compression. We've got the limiter, which isn't doing anything. It's just taking off any spikes happen to come out. Run it through a pull tech, um, which boosts the sort of top top end, the 16K uh, range. And we've got the K stereo on again. Don't always put this on drums because it can kind of make it sound um, a bit messy. Um, but I guess it worked in this case. Although looking at that, it's making me quite nervous because that's quite high. Wouldn't normally do that, but anyway, it's done now, so whatever. Um, so yeah, all of our buses go through to the to a main mix bus where we use a Neve 88 RS, which again is on the comes through the UAD Apollo. All we would use this for really is boosting the top ends again. It kind of glues the top ends together a bit as a um, as a preset which we work from called High End Sparkle, which just sort of sets up the EQ and sort of boosts the top range a bit around the sort of 16 hertz um, kilohertz again. I wouldn't use that in everything, it's just, you know, if it's needed. Again, through another Camel Crusher. Too many Camel Crushers, man. But it works, so... And then running through, whole thing through an Ozone Imager, where we've got anything under, in this case, 175 hertz being set to mono. Obviously, you don't want any stereo um, signal coming through that low. Probably can't hear it through there, but you can see what it's doing. Um... Yeah, we solo, solo the bottom end. Obviously, see that's nice and mono. With it turned off, there's a little bit of low end leakage. Is that gross? A bit of low end leakage coming out in certain parts. So that just kind of sweep, sweeps up anything that, um, that we've missed throughout the general mix. You can probably turn that off for the. Um, breakdowns and intros to be honest which we should have done too late now um, and then yeah we've got this going into our master where we run it through ozone 8 um, again we've got another imager for whatever reason couldn't do this in the uh, in the uh, in the other one but um, that's not doing too much that's just um, messing around slightly with certain bands making them wider and taking in certain frequencies I think the neighbours are having a barbecue and I can hear it on the mic. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this is obviously some signal which has been fed through from somewhere. That's bugging me for ages. I can't find what it is, but you can't hear it, so it doesn't matter, right? So yeah, that's, that was just um, when referencing other tracks. We noticed it was a little bit wide in this region, maybe not quite wide enough in the top. So yeah, we just run it through there. Dynamics, we pretty much use the same settings on here for all of our tracks and leave it on here from the start. Um, it was just something that we keep on and work into. It's not doing too much, I don't think, apart from compressing the low end quite a lot. Um, these other bands don't really get um, touched. It just sort of glues the bottom end together a bit. And then run through the maximizer, which is the bit that obviously gives it the um, its volume. Pure jungle. But because we compress our buses as we go along as well, it's not actually compressing the main signal that much. Um, it's not really doing too much to the final, um, to the final sound. It gives it more volume, obviously, but um, we kind of compress as we go along, so everything's quite glued together um, when we come to the final mix. I'm gonna have a fast character, turn on the transient emphasis. Can't hear too much of a difference in this, but um, on this occasion we thought it sounded um, thought it sounded good. Then the old sausage fattener, just because we like his cheeky face. Um, it's actually set to naught fatness so in theory it shouldn't be doing anything don't know if you're gonna hear it at your end but there's a definite um volume change when you turn it on it's subtle but it, it for to me it, it sounds like it's um just that final little bit of glue that it needs so yeah we always have that on the master but just set to naught fatness not doing anything too drastic, but there must be some kind of like built-in limit or something which um, which just glues it all together a little bit. So yeah, that's all we do on our master really. We've got Magic AB open at all times, which is a wicked plugin if you haven't seen this. You can load in different tracks, so you can load in other people's songs, 
and you can um, obviously A, B against your own track. Yeah, you can flick between the two. I'm the watchman on the wall. It's a good, good way of just seeing if your track stands up to EQ levels, loudness and all that kind of stuff. And also if you make a couple of different mix downs, you can flick between a few and just see exactly you know which one you prefer. So that's a great plugin. I only found that a few years ago really, but it's, it's, we never knew we needed it until we found it. Any tips on finishing tracks? We, we always get into the habit of, of finishing tracks, no matter how they sound. There's bound to be one or two sounds or things that you like about a track. So if you hate the rest, delete that and keep keep the bits you like we, we hate sort of having whips left over and um, just sort of hanging around because it just i don't know it just feels a bit heavy to me it just seems like i need a nice clean slate so take the bits that you like out of a track and try and make it into something else finishing a track if you've got 16 bars down copy that copy and paste three four times and then then just try and move on to the breakdown so you try and make something else that way and, and at least then you've got a whole song in front of you and then you just go back into like the second 16 maybe duplicate the bass and try and mess around with the patch try and change it a little bit and just give it a bit of variation and yeah normally before you know it you've got a nice um nice arrangement on the go but yeah always finish your tracks i think anyway how did you make the snare um we didn't make the snare james brown made the snare or well, whoever made this drum kit made the snare. Yeah, this is all all break apart the just from from the break apart from this little um, little punchy snare underneath, um, which is from Virtual Right, I think. But that's all from the funky drummer break. Do you have the synthesizer drums always samples mixture of both? You can you can make your own um, snares and serum and kicks. Won't go into too much here. There's loads of tutorials on um, on YouTube and things, but made a couple of snares here. It's all about getting a note, and you sort of automate the the pitch of an oscillator really quickly. Add some white noise over the top to give it the kind of splashy sound, and again, just whacking it through some distortion, EQ, compression, and um, the good way about doing it through Serum is that you can you can tune your drums as well. So if your track is an F, you can just play the snare in F. You know, if it's in a G, you play it in G. So I won't go through all that, but there's tutorials online that you can easily make snares and, and kicks. So we do layer them sometimes, and we, we sort of layer them over breaks to yeah create new new snares. Um, it just happens to be in, in this track, the uh, funky drummer break was um, pretty much all that was needed really to do with the to do with the snare. I think we're going to wrap up there. As I said, we just released our sample pack, hundreds of bass sounds and uh, and drum breaks and our sort of full drums from all of our projects and things. So hopefully if you like what we do, then um, you're going to like that. Hope it's been useful for some people. Again, don't take anything you see online as gospel. People do things the wrong way. We do things the wrong way. But just do what what's, what's good for you. Um, keep making drum and bass. Keep your scene alive. And uh, yeah, peace out. <laughs>